We're back at it with another Build Biology. This time we got a car that I've only been able to build in Forza and make look cool, but is gorgeous. Man's been here before. What's up, man? What's going on? How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Good to Introduce see you. Introduce yourself. I'm Batim from BBI Autosport, Huntington Beach. We build Porsches. Build Porsches, and you've brought us a Porsche that is just gorgeous. It's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, brought you guys a 2004 996 GT2, the Widowmaker. The Widowmaker. Yeah. Why do they call it the Widowmaker? Two-wheel drive, boost, no traction control. We're going to talk about boost later. Yeah. You already told me a little bit yeah. off camera, and it's just unreal. Right. But right now, let's talk about the exterior. I mean, it just looks amazing from the outside. It looks very subtle, but I know it's not. <laughs> We started the build we kind of wanted to act like if porsche at the time some of the crazy engineers went to the parts bin and just went all right what do we got in the motorsport department what do we have here what do we, so we wanted to keep the look mm -hmm. identical you know it's an oem carbon wing you know the c all that stuff's kind of oem parts yeah. and um but then we went bananas everywhere else yeah so most of everything on the outside is factory stuff yeah factory stock but you know the the upgraded package where you can check the million dollar boxes or whatever they call mm -hmm. it with the carbon and then, you know, the, the, the scoops and the, actually the scoops have a walk aren't, around. they didn't offer them at that time in carbon. So we had MA do them, but uh, the wings carbon uh, from the factory, the seats, all, all the good stuff. It looks so nice. <laughs> so this is just basically the most upgraded version you could get. Correct. You just pulled the parts off and threw on it, whatever you had right. to make it look very clean. Yeah, and that kind of sums up the body work. We just wanted to keep it clean and, mm -hmm. and trim. Yeah, and the wheels look insane. I yeah, see the, the monolug. Yeah, so those are, these are E88s. Um, we, we spec'd them in 19 inch, and uh, we needed to clear the brakes because the 18s wouldn't clear the custom Brembos that they built for us. But They're massive. Yeah, the monolog, the mono, uh, the center locks, they, they have integrated locks in them, and uh, it's, it's straight yeah, from it's the- really cool. Yeah, it's straight from the 996 RSR. That's awesome. So, quick wheel changes. So, what size are the wheels? The wheels are 1912 rear and 199 front. Yeah, and you can see the offset change in- Yeah, the barrels. Front to the back, the barrel, for sure. It's really cool. Now, it's hard to avoid everything in the interior, especially looking from the outside right here and seeing all the suspension work. But we'll get into the interior and just check out what's going on in there without talking about that for the moment. Right on. <laughs> so what we got going on in the interior? So the interior is, again, you got the classic cocoa mats. Um, everybody in the 70s, was dying for those things. So those are rad. <laughs> yeah, they kind of integrated those in. Yellow deviated stitch all over the place with mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stuff's OEM carbon that uh, Matt, the owner, was able to source from the factory. But what he couldn't find from the factory, he commissioned MA to do. So what what would not be from factory? This, the sill plate here, mm -hmm. um, there's a trim, I think two pieces of trim on the cup holder up there. and. But the, How do you source stuff like that? I, I don't know. He just <laughs> he geeked out over it, and he yeah. just yeah. He's every month he'd be like, oh, I found this. I'm sending it over to you guys. Like, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cool. And then uh, he had uh, a couple different people do some of the the seam work on the seats and yeah, the seats look awesome. Yeah. And and then completely carbon. Yeah. Behind that we have our roll bar that we kind of integrated the base plates into the the rocker suspension back there. Try and see if I can get in there and see it. The suspension looks insane. Yeah, so the idea behind the suspension was um, kind of looking through the back of a watch. It's a little dramatic, a little yeah. bit more than it has to be, but right. it's pretty cool. Like when I was driving down here, looking in the rear view, and everything's doing this back there. And oh, you, yeah. yeah. I didn't even like, think oh, about that, that. Yeah, it's worse than looking at your phone. The, you can see yeah, that when you're texting and driving. I want to see if we can even get a... Oh, yeah, you can definitely see that. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I would uh, probably be too focused on that and end up crashing this car. I almost did twice on the way here. <laughs> so can we pop it up and take a look at it? That's as open as That's as open as it's gonna yeah, get, isn't open, it? Yeah, I can do yeah. this. Yeah. So you can imagine installing it's pretty How do you get back there? We actually pulled the rear glass to do oh, it. Oh pull everything yeah. out. 
That's crazy. And then I don't know if you could see in between there, there's a bladed sway bar that actually. Yeah, I do. It, we I got rid of the lower sway bar and put it up there. And this is like the most awkward stance I can get in to get there. But yep. Wow, that's crazy. We can't take the glass out. <laughs> no, I know. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> but, but do you want to see it? Is there any adjustment that you can make? Yes. Yeah. So these are triple adjustable Olins. And the idea behind the whole thing is typically to get a kind of a compliant ride out of a car, a lot of like the factory and a lot of people put a progressive rate spring in the car. Mm -hmm. But you'll always have a linear rate damper unless you have electronics. Uh, this, we put a linear rate spring damper, but you have a progressive arc on which it travels. So yeah. as piston velocities go up through travel, um, you actually get a lot more support out of it. But when you're cruising, I mean, it, it's pretty cush. Yeah. You know, it's, pre it's impressive. So um, there's a lot of geek factor in there that uh, Joe Scarbo and, uh, and the team over at BBI, that's what we kind of came up with to get the best of both worlds. If we're gonna go nuts here, may as well. Yeah. May as well make it real functional as well. So to make adjustments, you have to reach back there? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, have to, you can actually change the, the arc through different pickup points down th here, mm -hmm. and then uh, to change the damper settings, they're all right on top. Yeah, so, so at least that's pretty accessible yeah. if you have to reach back yeah, in there, that's it's not actually, too bad. Yeah, when you go on a road trip, you can dump some compression and dump some rebound out of it, right. you know, but if you're gonna go hammer on the canyons, you kind of click them back in. And, and that's, but, a, that's a wild looking setup, and, and I heard you say earlier that you guys do this fairly often, but not as dramatic. Not as dramatic as this, yeah. The, um, we just, we're building an RWB 993 right now, and it's mm -hmm. really low key and tucked yeah. real low underneath, you know, and, and small little dainty rockers and everything, but uh, Matt's a watch guy, and so he wanted something, yeah. you know, so we're like, okay, here we go. And That's it's like really looking cool. at the back of a watch, you know, with the... Yeah, it's in insane there. just to see all the mechanics of everything that's yeah. going on with it. Well, let's take a look at uh, the power. All right. <laughs> Wow, it's stuffed in there. Yeah, so there's 10 pounds of ish in a five pound bag. Mm -hmm. it, it makes about 800 wheel right now at 27 PSI. 800. At, what at, do you have to do to achieve that power number on, on a car like this? Uh, you, anything that air moves through is changed. You know, mm -hmm. turbos, manifolds, um, um, all the boost piping, intercoolers. Uh, we, just the way the air enters in, it actually used to have an air box right here through the small entry, but mm -hmm. it's actually pulling air from each turbo from both side scoops. Yeah, these guys here? Yeah, those, those do intercooler and induction. Okay, so I'd imagine it's divorced then? Yeah, they're, there. they're divorced right through there. And then it has tile turbos, tile of slash zona, and a pretty free-flowing exhaust that we built. Secondary fuel pump in there. Um, so ID 1000 injectors, yeah, kind of build it up. His, his next goal with it is to get it to spin to 9500. So the engine's coming back out. We're going to do a crazy top end on it. Wow. And what is uh, it rev to now? Right now it's about 8000. 8000? Yeah. So it's going up 1500 RPM. Yeah, we, we haven't done, we've gone to nine. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no, I want to go 9500. We're like, okay, here we go. Outrageous. Yeah. Is it pretty laggy in this car? Is it? No, super it hits, responsive. It's really, it, it's, you know, um, I mean, even when you're just cruising at 3,000 RPMs on the freeway and you just touch the throttle, it comes out of vacuum, it, you're immediately making three or four pounds of boost. So it's, it's really responsive. And that's why they call it the Widowmaker. It, yeah, it, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I, I'd imagine a brake loose, but you got at least some big tires to yeah. try and keep it down and a whole bunch of suspension working for it. So that's crazy, all the little fans. It looks almost like a computer fan. Yeah, all the, all the Porsches have either one or two fans up there. The 996, 997s have that single, and then some of the newer stuff has twin. So to work on this, this is mainly from underneath then? Yeah, underneath, or, I mean, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but it's, if you need to do any service work, it's easier just to pull the engine and trans out from the bottom. I, I would believe that. Yeah. Like, yeah. just yeah. drop everything down. Drop it, and, and then that way you're getting to it. If you have to change an injector, take the engine out. <laughs> so it's- Oh uh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a nightmare, but all well worth it when it's all working. Well, that looks awesome. Is there anything in the in the boot to here? Yeah, the, well, you know what? There's the C. So, me? I didn't point out that we got rid of the power steering driven off the engine, and we yeah. put GT3 cup power steering, electric power steering up here. So oh, that's, wow. that's the reservoir tank and all the motor and the hydraulics are all underneath there. And you can kind of see the hydraulic lines running up here oh, through the yeah. rack. So it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's, but outside of that, you still, get, you still get some room to put your, put your purse. <laughs>
Well, let's get at the business in and uh, get it on the lift. All right, you want to help me knock one of these wheels loose? Yeah, All we right, can do you, that. You're probably gonna have to get on the brake. I wanna see this process. See. The socket actually has this taper in here that knocks the locks back. Mm -hmm. And it's got these, these detents in here that hold the nut in. So when the socket slides in, it automatically collapses that. So when you're spinning it off, so that as you're coming back off with the nut, the nut actually holds these down. It. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It's down so then you can do a quick swap. That's cool. The nut's still in there, and typically when you run so it yeah, down. So yeah, that's something I was always kind of interested in because I never really looked at it. I, I thought it was cool, but yeah, you can see now that that's there. So holding that groove that'll hold the nut, these get knocked in. Right. And it comes off. Yeah. That's so nice. All right. About 360 pounds. 360 foot pounds. Yeah. There we That's go. That's a lot. That will get us loose so we can break it the rest of the way off on the lift. All right, so aside from the beautiful body lines and all the nice carbon fiber work we can see on the outside, there's not too much to see on the outside of a Porsche as far as the business end goes. So. Now we can see underneath it. I, actually, from here, I like to look at all the coolers and stuff. Yeah, I got big old um, CSF coolers on there, uh, all three radiators. You add more power, you need to cool it more. All you know, so. three radiators. Yeah, so you have three big ass radiator right here that's like almost 17 inches long. And then, you know, it's... it's so that goes almost all the way to the wheel. Yeah, th that's part of the problem. You get if the wider wheel or bigger diameter, you have to actually move the whole radiator wow. forward. Wow. So it, it and these are big wheels. For yeah, this, and it, it, so it occupies all that space right there. And then you've got a, a center radiator that ducks up to the top. So mm -hmm. as the incoming air comes through, it goes over the top instead of traditional turbos dumped through the bottom. And uh, and then you have your obviously your AC exchangers in front there. But yeah, gotta have air conditioning. Gotta have gotta, AC. Gotta stay comfortable. Yeah, we're in California. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool to see that just from all the ducting. But you can't really tell when you're on the ground. You right. know, that all the ducting and stuff is so functional and that each cooler is laid out so nicely. I bet that takes a lot of planning as well. The one thing about Porsche is like anytime you pull a bumper off front or back, it, you just see how much stuff is crammed. Just like, so and, much. And every little thing has a relief to run a pipe through. Yeah. It. I mean, it's, they, especially on the newer, the newer cars. It's I, was, pretty, I was at a body shop the other day and I saw a Panamera with a bumper off. Oh and yeah. I was like, what is all yeah, of this how stuff? How is all of this under yeah, here? Yeah, it's insane. There's so much plumbing and stuff that goes through here that you have no idea. Well, everything looks crazy flat, which is amazing to have in a performance car yeah. for the airflow and everything else. And, uh, but from what we can see, we can see these gigantic brakes. Yeah, Brembo kind of pulled out all the stops on these CCMRs that they built for us on this car. So it, we have, these knuckles are off of a GT3 cup car. Okay. And so that, uh, we, you know, the race, race spindle point, mm -hmm. and we actually ran a, a little bit shorter Olin's up top there because it's just such a tall knuckle. Yeah. Um, now, does that require a bunch of custom work yeah. to run? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff, but Olin's always, you know, they, you send them a print and they'll build it for you. So it's pretty, Pretty cool, but cramming it all in there and... And I see um, the adjustments are cool from right here. So. Yeah, you can, it's nice because you can just turn the wheel and reach in there. Yeah. And then... Um, <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, I got cup Feel car control doing. arms, cups, you know, mono ball everywhere, it's shim pack for camber adjustment. Where do you source parts like this? Uh, a lot of this stuff comes from the motorsport department. We okay. actually started making, when we built this car, we weren't making it, but we're, we're making billet arms mm. now for all of this stuff and um, Brembo, uh, built us the CCMR as a custom hat to work on it, and mm -hmm. then they built an adapter bracket to go on the, the knuckle. That right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, the GTR forged, and then billet nickel plated caliper with wow. titanium pucks. And what is the rotor made of? The rotor is carbon. Car it is carbon. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a carbon ceramic rotor. Gotcha. Yeah, I figured you'd have something a little beefier there. Yeah, it's not like the streetcar derivative. So this is actually not one of those that you'd swap out to put the iron rotors on. That yeah. typically people. This is one that you take it out and. Make so, it glow. So it's streetable and stuff. It's streetable, but it's more more of their right. their high performance track setup. Wow, that's cool. But they don't they don't howl. Uh, they really they stop really well though. I see uh, adjustable sway bar links. Yeah, tear it drop links on there, and pretty much every pickup point and even the front track we pushed way out. You know, instead oh, yeah. of 
to get more camber instead of knocking the tops in, yeah. we pushed them all the way out and then took the bottoms out and then lengthened the radius arm to recenter the wheel. Mm. And that, that gives you a really nice front footprint. Yeah. So you actually get a full inch of, of track width without rubbing on, up top. On either side or both? No, total. Total, yeah, one total. inch. Yeah, so you, I mean, you can see the shim stack is, is about oh, yeah. 13 and a half millimeters right there. Wow, that's cool. And then when you do that naturally, the wheel wants to arc forward. So then we, right. you know, recenter and, and redo the wheelbase. Mm -hmm. All right. And then everything else is flat underneath, but now we can move to where everything is. It looks like there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Then all of a sudden, bam, here's yeah, all the so business. Yeah, so here's, um, the, we, we went through and Matt likes his cars real low, and, but they still have to function. So actually the subframes right here, that bolt to the chassis mm -hmm. up here, um, these are off of an RSR. And traditionally, when you look through a typical 911 GT3 or GT2, you have about an inch and a quarter of space between the cross member of the, the transmission yeah. right here, the housing. This is, I mean, I can't get my yeah, finger through it. So fingers we barely. essentially raised, or, well, yeah, we, inside the chassis from this standpoint, we raised all of the pickup points upward and then got rid of the eccentric and the toe link with the RSR. Mm. So we had to move actually these lines out of the way. We had to notch the body here to get to get these to fit. It actually oh, wow. almost touches the, the, the water pipe there. That's how far everything got pushed up. Yeah. It's all those little things that, that make it so this car just, it just <laughs> it's actually really tame and civil for yeah. having the horsepower. But that's just one of those annoying things. I know if you're getting into this and that kind of builder, you're like, oh, well, this is going to hit here. Now we have to notch the, that. Yeah, the, the list then, never ends. It just keeps <laughs> yeah. going, oh, well, when we notch that, we have to move the vacuum line. And then we have to push this down and bend that around here. We right. have to move all, all of the, you know, all the lines on this side out and over on the, on the frame rail. So a lot of hours in the planning to get this even to set in here. Yeah, exactly. And did you guys do all this with the motor in place? Yeah, we did it with the motor in place at wow. the time. Because um, you have to allow, not only for this coming up here and the, mm -hmm. and the clearance on, on the bottom, the, everything up top as well. Correct. To clear. Yeah, exactly. Up there. exactly. So. Back here we have Tile slash Zona uh, integrated wastegate turbos. They're, uh, they're good for about 550 wheel a, a, piece. a piece. Yeah, and then we built this exhaust in house. You know, we, we started playing with different inversion reversion so cones for response. It sounds so good. It was, and it doesn't. Is, the nice part is it doesn't drone yeah. when you're when you're cruising in sixth gear. It's just really tame. Everything's tame about it yeah. until you you crack it open. I just when I heard you pulling in, it was just like wow, this is just really quiet and, and tame. And then you get on it, and wow, it sounds amazing. Is there anything upgraded to the transmission or clutch or upgraded differential? It's got a uh, an RPS slash ERP triple carbon clutch, so mm. three, three discs, yeah. and a real lightweight flywheel. Um, we're going to, at some point, re-gear it, but right now we're just, you know, beefy differential and call it a day. What, what's the gearing change for? Is just, it uh, real tall now or real short? No, we, the first, second, and third are nice, but the, the later 997 GT, the 997 GT2 RS comes with a, uh, integrated first gear is on or it's, it's on the main shaft. The main shaft's a lot sure. bigger, so you have a lot taller first, second, and third. Mm -hmm. It's just a little short right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, just so need you just want to a little take it bit, out a little, a little bit further. more, yeah, yeah, to take advantage of the torque. Instead of just banging through the right. first couple yeah, of years. Yeah, you get, you get real busy yeah. because, you know, this thing makes, you know, well over 600 pounds of torque to the ground at like 3,200 RPMs. <sighs> so it's breaking loose. Yeah, and torque on the, we call these things stump pullers. So the, it, when we build a like a hill climber style engine where mm -hmm. it doesn't rev to 9,000 like the last car we had here doing donuts out there, yeah, uh, that car doesn't make as much torque as horsepower. But Hold these on. cut to some footage of that thing doing donuts. <laughs> If you're making 800 wheel, you're making a little over 800 torque to the ground. So it's like a diesel. Yeah, it's wild. And just to see everything so close with the, the turbos and stuff is so close to the wheel. I think that's the biggest challenge. Like with my finger barely fits in between this and the, and the boost piping. Yeah, the, the biggest challenge with Porsche and tuning is, is packaging. It's, it's amazing because I can see everything so well underneath, you know, with the manifolds to the turbos and everything else. But I know that 
you have to pull everything out of this to work on it. Like you said before, you gotta pull the motor to do anything. Yeah, spark plugs are right here. Like theoretically it'd be easy, but you know, they're, <laughs> they're behind this heat shield, behind yeah. the turbo. So you pull the bumper, pull the pull. intercooler, pull. Sometimes it's just easier to pull the engine out pull, and, just, I and just dial it in. Fully agree with you. I would yeah, not all you have, pull off you, the body panels. You pull the, the supports off, the subframe, unhook everything, grab it here and here by these two points right here. And you know, you have, amount here and then you have the two big bolts right here so do you have like a, a specific cradle that you yeah we built this? we built four or five cradles that actually hook up right here mm. and they sit here and here yeah and then uh then you can take it out with the transmission on either one of the rolling carts or just set it straight i'd on the say it'd be much easier than just it really some, is some guy normally doing it with a jack on his floor so. yeah because uh, you'll end up completely totaled cut <laughs> yeah, there, yeah burned yeah but that that is impressive that everything i mean for just most of the guys here that want to see burnouts and stuff. Man, could you imagine the carnage if you lose a wheel or a it, tire? It I mean. takes everything out from here back. Yeah. Just Sometimes the exhaust survives, but you usually take out a turbo, at least an actuator, gate, the yeah. whole inlet, wastegate, discharge plumbing. And then when that happens, you take your intercooler out because it's still blowing <laughs> rocks through everything. Where's the intercooler? The intercooler sits right, you can see the bottom oh, okay, of it right yeah. there. And there, is there one on either side? Yeah, a pair of them. So each turbo. Each turbo, oh, this is what you can see a little better. Yeah, this is the charge side. So it comes out of the turbo, it discharges yep. into the intercooler through there, and then the air comes through the scoop and it dumps out through here. So this is where we're talking about where it was divorced. So Correct. half of it's going to half the of induction. It's going to induction. Yeah. You know, the, well, a little more than half of it's going to the, the cooler. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. So through there, then the ducting would run up and over, mm -hmm. down through here. Right. And that's the exhaust of it. So wow, I think you can see how well that would actually work. Just the the airflow just coming in through here, and evaporating and that's, uh, out through here. And the way the the air that you see everything from Porsche Motorsport, the way the air spills off the front of the car under the mirror. Yeah, it's almost when you have when the car's wet or dirty and you go hauling ass through the rain, you can see the stripe bend down and like yeah, it hits even just the, the little strains of dirt. Yeah, <laughs> even the cars without those scoops, you just see everything kind of go right past mm. here and fall over the wheel. So they capture it right there. And then this, you just imagine they're rushing by it mm -hmm. and pulling that out, creating just, a little pressure zone right yep. here, and it, it evacs. How many you know cars do you think you've been involved in now? Oh, Porsche. A lot. Since, man, I, since I was 17, I started 18, I think I was sweeping a floor in a Porsche shop. Yeah. And then uh, since then, I'm 38 now, so 20 years of wrenching. Lots of, yeah, lots a of lot cars. of them. A lot so of you've them. had a lot of time to refine and, and make everything beautiful and perfect, and that's what we're seeing in this for sure. Looks amazing. We need to pull off one of these wheels and, and check out how that works. All right, let's do it. So fast, I couldn't even lower the lift down. Want me to do it again? No, you're good, you're good. That's amazing though. I was lowering the lift down and he's already got the wheel off. That's uh, when you have one lug, it's yeah, pretty and rad. And you can earlier, see that that's stuck in there. Yeah, so this is what the inside of the nut looks like. And Right here, the, the, we call them chiclets, but the, the locks, you, they shove down and then you're able to do that and then you can remove the, wow. it's all for the quick change stuff, but why, you know, it's still gotta have the, the yeah. stuff on your streetcar, right? Of course. The, I'm super jealous of this. Yeah, it makes it so <laughs> easy. <laughs> Typically you have that on an impact gun. Yeah. But the new, the, all the new 911s with the center locks, you don't really want to do that because they've got an aluminum nut and it's more designed for the big breaker bar and torque wrench. All the center lock stuff to, to get that off, of, it's all off of a cup car. Correct. You have to track that down to Porsche Racing Correct, and stuff yeah. like that if you were to do that for a normal street car. Right, right. The so brakes look insane. They're so huge. Oh, wow. That is so crazy to me. Because that wheel, if you look at how wide that sucker is, is right here. You can actually see every once in a while. <laughs> Catch a little tire. Or we might have pushed that in there. We'll be, you know, that might have been when we were testing it, but we had to hammer that all flat. And, so. But all the suspension looks, you know, pretty easy to adjust. It really and, is. And everything to get to. Yeah. So that's, that's nice as well. And then the caliper and everything itself, super accessible. Man, this is a really cool car. You've done a really, really, really good job on it. It actually, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. It actually turned out to be kind of our, our shop favorite for the, you know, yeah. it, just the way it all turned out and the, the, 
really with the way the thing drives. Yeah, I really you. appreciate you bringing this by. Thanks for having me. And having, yeah. Oh, we're gonna have you bring some more in. All I'm, right. I'm curious to see some more of the stuff that you call the hammers and stuff like that. All as right. Well, yeah. So. I want to bring that Ultima by. Yeah. Yeah. That that's a that's a pretty cool car. It's not up our alley from because you know it's got a 427 and yeah. it's Motec injected and right. sequential blocks, but that stuff's cool and uh, the car the build turned out awesome. So I'll bring that by soon. Well, thanks for bringing it yeah. by, man. Let's go get some lunch. All right. That was a really awkward one. Yeah. You should, well, how we're should we do just, it? We're just going to hug. We're just hug. Yeah, we'll just hug it out. See? That's how you do it. Yeah. We're going to eat lunch now. All right. Well, kind of want to hear it run. Okay. Sounds like the most modest 800 horsepower ever, and then you get into it a little bit. And yeah, it's like so tame, just idles. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, that takes a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. Ah, God, I love that. Oh, it's good. <laughs> when it idles, it's just so smooth and calm. Together, right? And then, wow, man, it's insane.